If you're a pop culture junkie who loves TV, film, music, comedy, and other really important stuff, then you've come to the right place. Get ready and settle in for Classic Conversations, the best pop culture interviews in the world. That's right, we circled the globe so you don't have to. If you're ready to be the king of the water cooler, then you're ready for Classic Conversations with your host, Jeff Dwoskin. All right, Emily, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. You get the show going each and every week, and this week was no exception. Welcome, everybody, to episode 322 of Classic Conversations. As always, I am your host, Jeff Dwoskin. Welcome to what is sure to be the most out of control episode of all time. My guest today is none other than the amazing Amy Dolans. Loved her in Can't Buy Me Love, General Hospital, She's Out of Control, and so much more. And that's coming up in just a few seconds. And in these few seconds, Joseph Culp, the original Dr. Doom from Roger Corman's unreleased Fantastic Four, was my guest last week. Check that out. That completed my trilogy of Dr. Doom, Sue Storm, and the original Mr. Fantastic, all from that legendary unreleased movie. But we're here to talk about released movies. Miracle Beach, Pumpkinhead 2, Ticks. Oh, so much, so many stories. You're going to love my conversation with Amy Dolans. Enjoy. All right, everyone. I'm excited to introduce my next guest. Actor, producer, artist, author. Loved her in Can't Buy Me Love, She's Out of Control, General Hospital, million other things. She ruled the 80s and the 90s. So excited to have on the show, Amy Dolenz. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a long time. We were almost did it, and then there was a strike. Strike and uh, oh my goodness, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> we're here. We did it. We're here. Yay! So excited. <laughs> I've got tons of questions. I always do this. I like, I'll rewatch stuff. It's been an Amy Dolan's couple of weeks as I watch some movies and TVs oh, and stuff like that. Goodness. You're probably <laughs> going to ask questions that I don't even remember. <laughs> it's more just, uh, it's kind of just, you know, get into my super fan mode. So <laughs> no gotchas. And I'll give you time if, if you need time to remember something. <laughs> Amy, so you ruled the 80s and 90s, but before that, your parents both famous. When were you aware that your parents were famous? Oh, um, that's a... Oh, hey, no, I do um, kind of remember. I remember, um, I tell this story sometimes. My dad and mom got divorced when I was quite young. So my dad was a weekend dad. So he'd pick me up and we'd go ice skating. That was one of my favorite things to do. And of course, he'd get stopped all the time and recognized and autographs and pictures and stuff. And, you know, I'd, I'd get a little annoyed. I was about six, seven, maybe eight at a time around that, you know, period of time. And that's when I first started to notice that people would constantly come up and want to like talk to him and see him and stuff like that. But the funny thing is, is, you know, and then I was annoyed. So I had him dress up in, in a costume. Kind of, you know, the hat and glasses, and I tried to make him look different, and you know, and then nobody recognized him, and I was, you know, that was kind of cool for two seconds, and then, and then I said, you know, Dad, um, it's okay, you can take the costume off now, you can take the hat and the glasses and everything off, because I was so used to the, uh, you know, all the, um, you know, all the attention that, because uh, I was so used to that that I wanted it back. So my dad always thought that was so funny because that's how I grew up. And I was just that kind of time. Well, then you took control of it. You're like, all right, now it's on. Now it's on. Uh, I'll I'll allow this. I'll allow this because I'm. I, you know, this is weird now. Now it's weird that people aren't paying attention to you. <laughs> well, at the time, so if it's if you're six or seven, this is mid seventies, right? Yeah. So monkeys were probably at this point. Show was probably off about five years or so, like that. But like. Yeah, because I was born after the monkeys. So did you know your dad was a monkey? Like, did you want, like, when people are coming up, they're like, oh, your dad's like this super famous TV guy and singer, the voice of the 60s, basically. (laughs) You know, it's like. Yeah, I know people would say that all the time in school. My teachers would be fans, you know, which was kind of (laughs) weird. Teachers asked to get an autograph from my dad. (laughs) Here's 
and bring your homework back. And by the way, can you like have them sign it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They put in a new policy. Uh, we yeah. need the parents to autograph, <laughs> prove that you saw it. Just uh, why, why are you only saving Amy's? <laughs> That's funny. So your teachers, it's funny because like when you think back, when you're that young, your teachers are young. So your teachers, you always think of teachers as being old, but when you're when you were like five, when you were six or seven, your teachers were probably in their early twenties. So they were yeah. possibly in love with your dad, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or or Davy or Peter. Oh, one of the monkeys. One yeah. of the monkeys, right? Uh, <laughs> Have their favorites, you know. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so funny. All right, so and then your mom was also famous, British model, top of the pops. Is it Just? How do you say it? Is it French? Is it, how do you, Samantha? Oh, Samantha Just. Just. Oh, if, you know, I, I had to go fancy. I'm like, it can't be Just. It can't, <laughs> it can't no. be that easy. <laughs> okay, no, just Just. <laughs> British. You know, there's got to be something in there. It's like, no, Just, Just. Okay. <laughs> All right. So your famous parents, and then you growing up and you decide you want to act at some point, right? Mickey now, Mickey comes from a fame, your dad, I'm sorry, comes from famous family too. His dad and mom were also. Yeah, third generation. They didn't necessarily take it to you wanting to be an actor? Yeah, my dad wanted me to do anything but act. <laughs> anything but be in show business. But I was determined when I became a teenager, you know how teenagers are, like, I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> So I talked him into it and, you know, went, daddy, I really, 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 really want to do this. So I kind of went behind his back a little bit. Um, his best friend, I went to him and uh, I know he knew uh, agents and things like that. So I kind of, you know, went, yeah, can you help me out? And he's like, okay, but dad, I'm going gonna to have to tell your dad at some point. <laughs> and we did. And he was fine with it eventually. So I got my way. <laughs> As you really do <laughs> when it comes to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you sat your parents down and you're like, I'm going to act. And then you won a junior star search. Yeah, that's right. That was the first thing that that's how I got my SAG card, which is not an easy thing to do sometimes. I, I guess back then, I don't know how easy it is now, but so that's how I got my SAG card, which is union. Nobody knows. <laughs> Uh, yeah, now SAG AFTRA, which is why we're not talking till now, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's all changed. All right. So yeah, so I read there was thousand a thousand tapes submitted. Young Amy Dolan's rises above, and uh, you won the competition. Once you won that competition, what did that open up? So now you're starting to your dad's friend helped you out, but now you're starting to knock down some doors. At the agent before that. And I'm not, I mean, my dad's name obviously opened up doors. I got my foot in the door and then I had to, you know, actually come through. But, uh, and that, yeah, that opened up um, just a lot of auditions. And then of course, like all the actresses, you know, now and back in the day, you go for your auditions, you do your callbacks, you either get it or you don't, or, you know, so disappointments and then highlights and all that. Did everyone assume you could sing? Pretty much. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Nobody's asked me that before. And uh, yeah, everybody thought I could sing. I'm, I mean, I can, I can like do karaoke. <laughs> and that's pretty much about it. <laughs> I'm not Broadway. You know? <laughs> Did do you really good karaoke? <laughs> any of your siblings get the singing gene? Not really. No, 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 none of us. I mean, we all just sing for fun. We do that a lot. We've actually done karaoke together. So. <laughs> 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 That's about as far as I think it got. <laughs> I think the monkey's theme is the only thing I've ever actually done as karaoke. I'm not very, oh. I'm not good at singing, but that song is just too fun. You can just. It's fun and it's easy. And yeah, that's so funny. So to go back for a second in time, uh, and maybe you were too young. There was a point where you lived in Laurel Canyon. Was that yeah. during the whole everything in music was happening during that period? Did, did you, were there famous people coming in and out of the house type stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, all my next door neighbor was Alice Cooper. I remember Alice Cooper more than anybody because I used to go to his house all the time and swim in his pool. And my grandfather and him were friends. And my grandfather, I think, was the one who taught him how to play golf. So because he was a big golfer, my grandfather, and he um, worked on Allison's house. So that was a lot of fun. So I was over there a lot. 
and Allison House, yeah. Alice Cooper from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, Alice was great. He was uh, he was kind of my babysitter, so, you know. <laughs> Did that scar you at all? Is that a fair? <laughs> no, not at all. He was a wonderful babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't wear the makeup while he was babysitting. No. <laughs> I remember the first concert I think I ever went to was the Black Widow concert. And Alice, you know, I remember this so distinct. I must have been like six or something. For some reason, I remember backstage and he was putting on his makeup and he said, you know, okay, Amy, now don't be scared. This is just me and it's still me. I'm just like half scary makeup on. I, I kind of remember this whole you know, thing that so because he didn't want me to be scared. And I went to the concert and that was my first concert. It wasn't a monkey's concert. It was an Alice Cooper concert. My, <laughs> my first concert with my parents. There's two first concerts I feel you always have. There's the one with your, you go with your parents and the one solo. The, yeah. the Barry Manilow parents, the monkeys oh. were actually my first. Oh my God. That's crazy. That's so cool. <laughs> the uh, 20th anniversary, that big, uh, that big shindig that they did. The big comeback. The big comeback. I remember that very well. I went on tour with them and I was like 16 at the time. I was like, so cool, tour bus and, you know, the whole bit. (laughs) Was that fun? I wouldn't call you a roadie, but like. (laughs) No, it was really fun, though. It was a lot of fun. And Weird Al Yankovic, I remember opening up for them at some point. I don't remember because I think they had a couple of little tours then. So, but I remember him opening up and that was so much fun. I got to go on stage with Weird Al and get cut in half with my best friend, Chanel. So that was kind of fun, (laughs) like a surgeon. (laughs) I love that. I love Weird Al. I love Weird Al. (laughs) Oh, he was so much fun to hang out with too. We were always hanging out with Weird Al and his band. It was a lot of fun. I think all the backstage stories, we could probably fill up the whole time, but uh, (laughs) I love, I love these. So that's cool. So, all right. So since you were toured with the monkeys, did you have a a favorite monkey besides your dad? I'll assume your dad is your favorite monkey. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a toughie. I did. I love them all pretty much equally. I mean, I hung out with David, um, Davy Jones a lot because his daughters and me were really good friends. So I think between all of them, I I knew Davy really well because he was always over at the house and I was always playing with his kids and that kind of thing. So he was kind of like a second dad. Yeah. That's really cool. Did you ever get to know Mike? Because Mike didn't tour with them back then. Maybe he showed up once every oh, night. Yeah, I I don't, I really, I I mean, I definitely know Mike. It's always said hi and big hug and, you know, and all that. But um, he was, yeah, he was the least one that I really knew. I knew his kids more than, than him. I knew his um son uh, jason um really well mike wasn't really part of all those early ones and then he it was a little bit and then yeah i know him and your dad toured towards the end yeah he just didn't like touring at all he hated it absolutely hated it yeah yeah i saw him and your dad in chicago oh cool i didn't get to see them together actually which kind of was really annoying but yeah i wanted to go and check it out and i never got to there's a great live album of the two of them that you can get Oh, cool. Oh, very cool. There you go. I shouldn't have to be telling you this. Yeah, I know. Well, it is funny because sometimes a lot, my dad and I talk a lot and this is like the last thing we talk about. Is. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure when you're talking to your dad, it's not about how famous oh, he is and all these. <laughs> Half the time, I don't know where he is. He's just calling me from somewhere. So I have to get on stage. I'm like, I have no clue that you know, he's performing. It's very funny. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Amy Dolan's about to take over in the 80s, right? So now you're you're acting and Children of Times Square was your first, but then also early on was Growing Pains. You were on a lot of big... Yeah, Silver Spoons. Yeah, all those, you know, little guest spots. I want to focus for a second on the new Leave it to Beaver. Oh my God, I forgot about Leave it to Beaver. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was a... Yeah, I remember that. You did two episodes of that. So what was it like hanging with Barbara Billingsley and Tony the Beef and Wally? And <laughs> It was so much fun. They were so great. Everybody was so wonderful. I remember um, the back streets. I think it must have been Universal, I want to say. I might, I might. Yeah, that might be wrong. Um, but all the, you know, they have this whole street with all these, you know, like proper little homes, 
And some of them aren't even real. They have just like the, you know, outer kind of shell. <laughs> and then when you walk back, it looks kind of creepy. <laughs> like nothing, you know, all this set stuff. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was just a great set. Uh, that was such a long time ago. It's hard to pin down like certain, you know, stories. It's just so, so, I was, so much was happening then too, because I was, I was doing all these different shows. So I was kind of running around a lot. Yeah, you were everywhere. Like you said, Silver Spoons for a few episodes, yeah, yeah. Webster, Mr. Belvedere, Starman. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Starman. Totally forgot about that. Oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. So, all right, let me ask you a question. Pivoting off the, oh, you know, the I forgot about that type thing. Do you have copies of everything you've ever done? I mean, maybe at the time you didn't, but have you ever like gone, oh, here's everything I've done or like, uh, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like I have clips of some things um, because, you know, you put together an acting reel and stuff like that. So I've done that. I'm, well, not, I don't have one anymore, but I used to, you know, put clips together and acting reels and stuff. But I think everything, probably not. I don't have everything. No. It's all just memories. No. <laughs> get older they seem to be drifting further and further away so. <laughs> it's interesting though with some of this new services you could probably hunt down some of these things i they... probably could actually yeah i probably could definitely definitely that would be kind of fun yeah for the amy dolan's museum yeah uh, <laughs> oh god <laughs> when you're doing all the tv you then you got a, a movie role, right? Are you at this time always auditioning for TV and movie? Because now we got Can't Buy Me Love with McSteen. Uh, is it McDreaming? <laughs> or Mc... uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, God. What was it? Do yeah, he did have that nickname for a while. Patrick um, Dempsey was a McDreamy. Yeah, I think it was Mc... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was reading for pretty much everything at that point. Yeah. Right, because you're everywhere. Do you have any memories of, of any stories from that movie? Oh, Can't Buy Me Love was a, a really, because that was the first time I um, was actually, I could go and I was, I think it was Arizona and I was 18. I just turned 18. So um, I didn't have to have uh, a chaperone. So that was, you know, that was very exciting. I do remember that. I'm like, my mom's not there. And yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Got to like go wild. <laughs> Out of control. Out of control. <laughs> She's out of control. Uh, nope, that doesn't come till later. First, we have General Hospital. Yeah. And then yeah, you drop was, out of high school. Yeah, I did. I um, well, I, I lived in Acapulco when I was younger, and they put me back a grade, basically. So I was, I think, eighteen in eleventh grade, so I could drop out. And I was working on General Hospital, and I just decided to, you know, out there working. So see ya. <laughs> I'm out of here. I got to go to work. Can't go to school. So. <laughs> Do you regret dropping out? Yeah, not not really. I hated school in general. So I was not really, you know, a school person. Sometimes I do, actually. I wouldn't recommend it to any anybody. I, I think, you know, stick with it. I wish I had stuck with it sometimes. Now it's just such a long time ago. It doesn't really make a difference. How did your parents feel about it at the time? I think my dad was more disappointed than my mom. But I never, I knew I was never really going to go to college. I knew I didn't want to go to college. So, you know, my college was kind of general hospital. It learned me how to say my lines, how to memorize, find my light, find my mark, deal with cameras, all that. So general hospital to me was kind of like college. And now you're starting to get noticed, Young Artist Award nominations. And so it's like you're becoming a big deal. And then you get like your first, when you left general hospital, that's your first headlining movie, right? She's out of control. Yep. Yep. That was very exciting. That was so exciting. I remember seeing my trailer. I'm like, oh my God, it's my trailer. Or I have one of my very own. <laughs> I mean, this is like extremely surreal. I mean, cause like, so you, right now you're, how old are you now? Like 20 ish? Yeah. I'm early twenties playing like, I think a 15 year old, a 16 year old or something. Yeah. I remember. It was the eighties. It was fine. It was the eighties. <laughs> Well, that's what they wanted. They wanted kids that, you know, that looked like kids, but still, you know, they didn't have to go to school and you, you could work them like hours for adults. So, yeah, that's why I got a lot of work because I look so young and my voice is still like really high. <laughs> How was Tony Danza as a, t as a movie dad? Oh, he was the best movie dad. He was so great. He was really, really fun. Tommy had a tap dance in the makeup trailer and 
uh yeah i remember him always you know making sure that if it's like a late shoot somebody walking in you do with her car and you know that kind of thing so he was very protective and very nice guy such a sweetheart very cool and then paula abdul oh yeah that was so much fun (laughs) because i was a fan so i was like oh my god paula abdul Uh, that's so funny. And then there's a young Dustin Diamond who you'd later work with again in uh, RIP in uh, Saved by the Bell of the College Years, but also Matthew Perry, young Matthew Perry. Young Matthew Perry, yeah. We had such a blast together doing that damn scene. And yeah, he was um, he was a great guy. Yeah, and we got to hang out off a set and, we, you know, because we kind of traveled in the same group of, you know, actors. So you know, events and stuff. We'd run into each other and all that. And yeah, it's really sad what happened. With that. Yes, very sad. Also a testament, just how much everyone just fell apart when that when he passed away. Just, I mean, like how much people loved him. And such a shock. And... A shock rewatching uh, She's Out of Control and seeing him being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did do a good jerk. He did everything good. And he was a really good actor. He was an amazing actor. Oh, he was great. Yeah, he's it's super funny. Such a talent. Sorry to interrupt. I have to take a quick break. I do want to take a moment to thank you for your support of the sponsors. When you support the sponsors, you're supporting us here at Classic Conversations. And that's how we keep the lights on. And now back to my conversation with Amy Dolenz. More friends? Absolutely. Such a talent. So, and then um, keeping in the friends theme, I guess, Jennifer Aniston, Ferris Bueller TV show. Yep. You were Sloan Peterson. Yep. That was a lot of fun too, boy. Oh my God. That was great. That was so great. Was there a lot of pressure with a show that's coming off like such a huge movie, like an iconic movie, and now you're going to make a TV show on it? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because it was just, it was kind of different. It was just so different from the movie. I kind of, I felt sometimes, but the humor was still there, which is so important. So, and and then at that point, you know, you're just doing your own thing. You're not even really thinking about the movie. You're just kind of, you know, doing your own um, version, I guess, of the characters. And then I read that Bill Bixby directed two episodes. Yes. (laughs) I remember him more than any, I guess, any other director because he was Bill Bixby. So, and I used to watch, you know, the Hulk and stuff. So I was like, that was very, that was very exciting to work with him. I can imagine. It would be amazing. I think he went on to also direct a lot of, um, what was that show? She was from on the Big Bang Theory also. Um, uh, anyway. Blossom. Blossom. Yes. Blossom. Bill Bixby directed a lot of Blossom episodes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, I hear what you, yeah, Blossom. There you go. Show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Usually these things pop, but it's just, I didn't even think about it. And Usually it. I'm the one who can't remember. So. <laughs> We're a good team. We're a good team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did Bill Bixby talk about like any of the classic things he was doing or is he just direct and go do your... No, he was, he was a very serious um, director. He was very focused. He never talked about, you know, at least not to me. And I don't think I even asked. I, I was, you know, I didn't want to like be like, oh my God. So what was like that? <laughs> no one was like, don't make him angry. Am I right? All right. Don't make him on. angry. Don't make him angry. Because then after that, I did a, some signings um, with, um, okay, now I'm blanking, the Hulk, the actually. Lou Ferrigno. Uh, Lou Ferrigno, yeah. Who's a, such a sweet guy. Very nice guy. So I got to meet him after I met Bill Bixby. There you go. The whole cast. <laughs> All right, so you you got to work with Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry just before yeah before they blew up on Friends. Yep, yep. All right, so then we're getting into the '90s. Miracle Beach, Genie named oh, Ge- played a yeah. genie named Genie. <laughs> Very fun to play a genie. You yeah, know, so whimsical. Pat Morita, young Dean Kane. Yep. I say young, it's just because I'm watching it now from my eyes now. It was just uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, Martin Mull, Dean Cameron. Can you explain to me, because I'm sitting there reading about it, it's like, released overseas as Hard Bodies 2. Like, what was that all about? Like, does any, do you even know? It just seems so weird. Well, I think because there were two versions. I never saw the other version, but I think there was one version where they did have some topless girls in it. So maybe that had something to do with it, Mm. I guess. No, because I do remember that there were two kind of separate versions. Not quite sure why. I guess to sell, you know, overseas more, you know, nudity. 
I wasn't in any of those scenes. So I, I assume that's what it was about. <laughs> yes, I read you are anti nudity, or like your own nudity, which is probably ends up being ends up being a good thing. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I just didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to do it myself. So I just, you know, but I'm totally cool with it. <laughs> I'm just shy. <laughs> I'm an actor, but I'm shy. Or used to be an actor. No, I th- I definitely think that's what it was about Miracle Beach. There was def- probably definitely a uh, a version with that was uh, suitable for TV. And then uh, Pumpkinhead 2. I watched Pumpkinhead 2 because I just I wanted to watch a Pumpkinhead movie. And I'm like, well, I might as well watch the one with Amy Dolan's. And... <laughs> And you got to work with Punky Brewster. <laughs> I know. She's such a sweetheart, Saleya. They were so sweet. When you're making horror movies, because you've done quite a few, Witchboard 2 and Ticks and uh, all that kind of I stuff. I love horror movies, so I decided to make some. <laughs> is it horrific? when Not horrific, but is it like, is there any sense of, like, what's it like when you're making a horror movie? Is it just like, <laughs> this will be scary when we watch the final cut type thing? Is it like? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cause you're having, you know, lunch with people that have, you know, have, um, you know, steaks through their bellies and, you know, dripping blood off their face and they're eating ribs, you know, or something. So it's just kind of, it's not really that scary when you're actually making one. Cause a lot of like cut, stop. Okay. Reset. <laughs> Where's the zombie juice? <laughs> yeah. So when you're making like one of these types of movies, then you really don't know what it's going to be until you see that final. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, you need the special effects and, you know, and all that. And then it's, you know, and it's kind of shocking because then it's like, oh my God, it looks so much better than you thought it would. Do you watch all your movies? Have you seen, is there any movies of yours that you haven't seen? Um, I eventually watched, I think, all of them um but i hate watching myself and a lot of actors and a lot of actors are like that they don't like seeing this well, some do and then some don't i'm one that i hate watching myself so i try to avoid it as much as possible <laughs> it's hard i get it you know because you're just you're like oh why did i do that or why was yeah, i should why did i do that differently <laughs> True or false, there is a quote uh, in terms of Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. The <laughs> quote was that you felt the video game was better than the movie. I no, that's definitely false because I've never seen the video game. <laughs> All right. I love the uh, debunking stuff. I've never seen it. That's definitely false. All right. I didn't even know there actually was a video game. <laughs> so that's really false. Uh. <laughs> That's why I always ask. I like, you know, you, you see all this trivia out there and it's like Amy yeah. Dolan's considers a uh, video game definitely better than the movie that spawned it. I'm trying to think. I mean, I, did I even know there was a video game? I don't remember a video game. I probably was just your voice in it or something. Oh, maybe. Yeah. That's weird. And then skipping around for a second, one thing that popped out that I heard you killed Mickey Rooney. <laughs> yeah, that is. I, I like saying that I got to kill Mickey Rooney. <laughs> In Murder, She Wrote. Uh-huh. I got to be the murderer. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I met Mickey Rooney once just for a half a second. He was in Detroit. Uh, I shook his hand. I said, hello, Mr. Rooney. That's just funny. It's just classic. You were in a TV show, Superboy, which I forgot there were, even was a Superboy, but I remembered when, when, I saw, when I saw it on your thing. I was like, oh, yeah. And then you got to hang with Zach Morris. Yep, yep. You've done it all. That was fun. I got to play, um, uh, actually, I got to play a singer. <laughs> so I got to pretend to be on stage and singing, and it was definitely not me singing. <laughs> all <laughs> lip sync. <laughs> but that was kind of fun because I got to play superstar for a minute. <laughs> That's awesome. I was so into Saved by the Bell and all that back then. It was. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Talk to me about. The Corey's. You did a couple of things with Corey Haim, I know. Yeah, that's another one. That was just, he's such a great, great actor. And he just, you know, he's just tragic. And um, he was just a fun, lovable guy, you know. Always had, oh, very funny, very funny guy. Lots of good sense of humor. It was fun growing up in the time of the Corey's, I'll tell you that. It was, uh, they were everywhere also. Yep, I knew both of them. I worked with both of them, actually, yeah. Corey Feldman now singing and doing all that stuff. It's- oh, that's right. I heard about that. Good for him. Very cool. He loved doing that. And I remember seeing him when he was younger 
um, doing something. I think it was at the whiskey. I want to say, yeah. And I was there supporting. <laughs> and then uh, ticks. Yeah. <laughs> But you have to say very carefully once I did some radio um, interviews and some other stuff. And I remember saying, you know, it's called ticks because if you say it <laughs> another way, it could come out sounding a bit different. So, yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun, too. So Alfonso Roberto, so you're back with him again after uh, yeah. Silver Spoons. He's a tough guy in this one. That was that was interesting to see. I, never, I couldn't picture him as a tough guy. <laughs> but I think that's why he loved doing it because he got to play something, you know, different from what he's used to. So it was good. I just, you know, when you have someone so in your head, you know, just the dance, mm-hmm. the dance thing that he done, the doing that and all that. And it was, it was like, typecast, you know, such a typecast. And then Seth Green, like, yeah. This, uh, Peter Scolari was in this, Clint and uh, his uh, his father, uh, Clint Howard. And his, it was like, uh, there's a lot of people in this movie. Yeah, Peter Scolari, yeah. So I guess, again, this one, this type of movie, Ticks, is just one of those where you got to go see it after and see how it... Oh, definitely, yeah. I, I remember, because the Ticks were actually, when we were working with them, were just like rubber toys. They didn't move or anything. They were just like, you know, something you give to your dog or your kid or something, like really just very fake looking. And then you get the special effects in there and it's pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. So after like this incredible 80s, 90s run, what made you kind of step away from acting? I just kind of, I guess I just lost the passion for it in a way. You know, you just kind of wanted to move on, do something different. And um, yeah, it's really as simple as that. Nothing, you know, really exciting. I think, you know, I got married. I I fell in love with art and I just I kind of wanted to be my own boss a little bit. And yeah, just that. Very uneventful. <laughs> just kind of eased out of it. It wasn't like some huge decision. Okay, I'm stopping. I mean, were the were the offers slowing down? Because you were like, it seemed like just in reviewing, going over everything. Everything was like you were on you were on fire. Like everyone wanted Amy Dolan's kind of rocking those two decades. All right, so you fell in love with art. Talk to me about like uh, I know you wrote a children's book, and I know. Oh, yeah. Tell me about sure. tell me about being an artist now. So I wrote the children's book Harold and Agatha first, and then um, I was still acting maybe a little bit here and there, not really into it that much, and uh, moved up to Vancouver, Canada. I fell in love with. Um, just kind of fiddling around with artwork and I always wanted to do art so it was something that I just kind of got back into and ended up going to a a school called Emily Carr University and getting my certificate for illustration and uh and I just you know I just really took to it so what is it what is that degree it just means you, you learned all these techniques yeah, you get a certificate and you say you can get a certificate. You know, it, it's it's watercolor, pen and ink, specifically illustration. And for me, it's pen and ink that I do a lot of my artwork in and watercolor. Yeah. Cool. So now you're doing what your parents wanted you to originally do and not be. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. My dad's very into it. <laughs> uh, all right. So you wrote the, the first book. What was the inspiration of the book? Uh, the inspiration for that one is actually from my dad as well. Um, he, uh, when my parents broke up, my mother ended up eventually going to England and we lived there for a little while, but then we moved back. And then my dad ended up going to England and living in England. So I would go for my summers and, you know, about three months um, every year and spend time with my dad. And he'd come back and forth a lot too. But in the beginning, uh, he would start a Harold and Agatha story. And so it's just the story that he would tell me every night before bed. And then by the end of the trip, he'd finish it. So we'd go to the airport and that would be the end of the Harold and Agatha story. So that's how that came about. I just remember all these stories of um, Harold and Agatha. I don't know how he came up with the names or anything, but, and uh, yeah, so I wanted to write it down and document. (laughs) That's really cool. (laughs) Father, daughter kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) Do you miss? Uh, acting? Do you ever think about going back into that world? Occasionally, I do. I guess I, um, God, what do I, I mean, I certainly don't miss all the auditioning and the lugging and do I get it, you know, do I didn't get, you know, 
and you know being told what to wear what to stand do this do that say it like that that kind of thing um but i i think it's the being on set with everybody and having that family unit kind of making something together then you know beginning middle and an end a finished product and being proud of it that's that that's the stuff i miss more than anything the thing i miss more than anything yeah the community amy i read that you turned down the audition for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Is that, really? Is that true or no? Don't remember. Ah. Honestly, I don't remember that. Well, there were so many auditions and stuff. Well, that would be one you would remember, I'd imagine, since it became... I would like... imagine so, yeah. All right. I'm debunking left and right. <laughs> well, I don't remember reading for it, so maybe I did. But like, honestly, I don't remember. That's weird. It was such a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> it's all good. Now. So, Amy, what would you can go deep cut or you can go uh, you can pick anything. But like, what would you say if someone were to like just discover Amy Dolan's and you were to like, oh, these are the three things of mine you need to watch? What would you recommend? What would be the, your Amy Dolan starter kit? Oh, whoa. Oh, that's a um well, I guess she's out of control because that was the one that it was just such a fun character. It was, you know, going from this ugly duckling kind of, you know, it had such a great arc um, there. So that was a lot of fun. And I guess Miracle Beach, because I mean, I got to play a genie. How fun was that? <laughs> and I just had such a great time with that that part. God, the third. Um, that's, a, uh, that's a toughie. Probably one of the scary movies. Um, ticks, maybe probably ticks because I got to play such a bitch that was kind of fun. Can I say that? No. <laughs> of course, of course. But I think ticks, yeah, because that was a fun part because I got to play all bitchy. Mm. All right, and then we'll put as a runner up killing Mickey Rooney. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> murder she wrote because <laughs> again, I got to play a murder, so fun, fun. And I think Witchboard 2 was also because that was really because I got to be possessed. All that. That was probably for scary movies. That would have been a good one, too. I love that one. So you just love scary movies. You play, is this is Halloween Huge. at Amy Dolan's house a big deal? I mean, it must be, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Halloween. <laughs> so the big question is on the TV, do we have Witchboard 2, Pumpkinhead 2, Ticks? These all running in rotation on Halloween as people come by. We did that a couple of times here in Vancouver because I'm passing out candy to kids. And so I have friends over and I just, you know, in the background, we'd have Halloween music playing. But then on the TV, we'd have like scary movies. So and my husband, of course, he's like, we got to put one of yours on. We got to put one of yours on. So we did. (laughs) It should be only Amy Dolan's movies, scary (laughs) movies. It's... Uh... It's your, it's your holiday. It's your holiday. Exactly. Uh, let's end with, uh, what, what's, do you have a favorite monkey song? Yeah. Uh, Stepping Stone. That's a good one. I love Stepping That's Stone. My uh, yeah. uh, not your Stepping Stone. <laughs> there you go. You have a voice of an angel. <laughs> Very cool. This was awesome. Amy, thank you for hanging uh, out with me. So much fun. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy we got it together. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Is there anywhere that people can keep up with you on the socials or online or you selling your art? AmyDolansArt.com. And um, everything's going to pretty much be there. So looking forward to that. Amazing. I will put a link in the show notes so everyone can uh, get all of your awesome art. Everyone should uh, start hunting down all the Amy Dolan's goodness <laughs> that, that we talked about. It's so sweet. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you so much. All right. How amazing was Amy Dolan's? What is your favorite Amy Dolan's classic? Tweet at me. Hashtag me. Whatever. You know. You know the drill. What's your favorite monkey song? Just curious. Special shout out to Jeff Raymond, the biggest Amy Dolan's fan in the world. Well, with the interview over, it can only mean one thing. I know another episode has come to an end. I do want to thank Amy Dolan's one more time for being awesome. And I do want to thank all of you for coming back week after week. It means the world to me and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Classic Conversations. 
If you like what you heard, don't be shy and give us a follow on your favorite podcast app. Also, why not go ahead and tell all your friends about the show? You strike us as the kind of person that people listen to. Thanks in advance for spreading the word, and we'll catch you next time on Classic Conversations.